So today we'll talk about correcting, correcting learners. How we should correct, yeah, and when should we correct, and about the techniques. So actually there are uh, a lot of different ways to correct learners. It depends on the situation and on a number of different factors. Actually, they're written here. So the aim, it depends on the aim of the activity. That is here. So is it fluency or accuracy? So what are we focusing on at the moment? Fluency or accuracy? And uh, this is crucial, actually. It depends uh, on our aim. And the second one, the age of the learners. Yeah? Young learners, adults. And at the language level of learners. So these are uh, the most significant factors that we should take into account in both the learners. Uh, and now let's discuss all together. Yeah. What correcting strategies do you know? Yeah. You can turn on your microphone. Uh -huh. Modeling. Is it a, is it a... modeling? Good. Yeah, what does modeling mean? Like you're, as an example, uh -huh. not right away correcting the learner, but showing how it should be, actually. Uh -huh. For example, it might be used for pronunciation. Yeah? Yes, pronunciation, yeah. You can pronounce the words and students repeat after you. Can, All we right. use it? you can use it in grammar as well, right? In grammar, why not? Yeah, you should give an example, a, a sentence, yeah? a situation. You can use it. Yeah. All right. Any other examples? Any other strategies that you know, except modeling? Yeah. Echo correction. Good. Well done. That's it. What is echo correction? It's uh, repeating with the inter intonation. Uh -huh. Exactly. So, shows the learner uh, did a mistake with the help of intonation. Good. You know, actually, pretty much. Any other techniques? No? Oh, no. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the correction correct strategies is uh, drawing a timeline. And it's, it's especially good for um, grammar, for teaching grammar as well, not only correcting, but teaching. Uh, we'll have a look at a number of different timelines now. So here, for example, past perfect tense. So we, should, we draw a line starting from past, we show present and future. And if you see, notice here, there, are, uh, there is a cross, yeah, which is in blue, and there's a dot here, right? We tell that there are two actions in the past. One is a cross and uh, one circle. And this circle actually happened before the other action in the past. So it's good for visual learners, you know. Some students need to see something, and it's, it's good for math and mathematical learners. Well, for example, they see a graph, they understand it better. So here we also give a sample, an example, of a sentence. By the time the troops arrived, the war had ended. So we say well, there are two actions in the past. One happens before. So which one is the troops arrived? Students say like. X, yeah, there is a cross, so this one. And the war had ended, let's do this one. Right. Uh, the second strategy is finger correction. Finger correction is used for, uh, usually for pronunciation. Actually, it can be used for um, grammar as well. Why not? So here, uh, it is used for pronunciation to a missing word or a contraction. Um, contraction means the short form, like isn't, yeah? For example, I have a dog. Students say, I have dog. I have dog, but um, something is missing. So you shall, and you say, I have, and there is something missing, dog. So what is missing? And students should say, I have a dog. Okay, so is this it a modeling teacher, isn't it? No, it's not. It's actually not modeling. If if modeling, you should say I have a dog right away. 
But oh. sorry, it's student correction. You wait for the response from students. Yeah. Student correct themselves, right? Yeah, exactly. What point is it? Mm -hmm. Or another, another example, a common mistake. Students say, uh, I am agree. I am agree. So you should decrease. The, yeah. Like uh, you fold your finger, which means that this word is extra. I am agree. So say it again. I agree. Yeah. So or another uh, example, like I am working. So you can show like finger, uh, like joining two fingers. Yeah. Or if you can, this. I am working. Join this. Two. I am. I'm working. So, uh, what kind of method is it? Is it Sajustapedia, Roman translation, or bilingual or silent way? It might be silent way. Silent way. Exactly. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. It's a good thing that you know it. Yeah. So we wait for students to self-correct. Keep silent, right? It's silent way. Exactly. Uh, and uh, which method is the best one? It's a tricky question, actually. In my opinion, audiolingual. Audiolingual? Yeah. Maybe grammar is it's, it's a tricky question, actually. Well, girls, there is no such a thing as uh, the best method, you know? There is no such a thing as the best method. Nowadays, we use a combination of all the methods that we had in history. Uh, our bilingual, we use it as well when students repeat after us, after teachers, like repeat after me, and we drill it. Yeah. For example, um, my feet is killing me. So we say this when we are tired and uh, our legs hurt. So we can say, my feet is killing me. And repeat after me, my feet is killing me. My feet is killing me. So students actually repeat like five times. So this is all bilingual method. We actually use it a lot nowadays as well. But we don't use it like as a whole method, uh, as the only method, you know. Uh, silent way, again, yeah. we use it for eliciting the correct answer from students. We don't jump in with correct answer, but we we'll wait for students to self-correct or say something. Uh, grammar translation, we use it from time to time again, uh, when we want to show the similarity or difference with our L1. And so just repeat it, we use it as well. We want to our students to be relaxed. We don't push them. We don't uh, yell at them, for example. Yeah, uh, we try to create a friendly atmosphere. So actually, we use all of these methods as a combination, and we use a communicative approach, right? So there is no such a thing as a, the, the best methods, and yes. we should use only one. We should all of them. We should use all of them. But teachers, yeah, I uh, have attended several. Uh, seminars which uh, of teachers who teach online and they use audiolingual a lot what i noticed they use audiolingual a lot uh, if it's online uh, those who teach in language courses like on campus they usually use grammar translation methods a lot they focus like 90 percent of it uh, grammar translation uh, why because it creates uh, image illusion that students are learning something it's quite fast you know they translate they try to understand uh, as far as audio is concerned again it uh, creates an illusion that st students speak but actually they're parroting they're just repeating to the teacher they learn a few phrases uh, but uh, they're not very proficient they do not understand what uh, native speakers say or other students, they cannot respond because they have only those uh, phrases that they have learned, you know. So this is why we should use communicative approach, all of them, not only grammar um, translation and All right, so let's go back to our models, uh, correction techniques. So here is a um, description of how we can use it, yeah. So I'm working. Actually, I showed you, I showed you, yeah, here, yeah. you. Or another example. Uh, first one, I went to home early. So a mistake, yeah? Five words and one is extra. So two, I went home. 
Yeah, with home we don't use to. Yeah? I okay. I went home. So I went home early. Yeah? He's a teacher. Again, three words. Yeah, students said three words, but some one is missing. So there should be one more. Yeah. He's a teacher. Or want your students to join the words. He's he's a teacher. Yeah, it's quite difficult actually. <laughs> <laughs> and here uh, the teacher is demonstrating yeah in demonstrating to class this way so you must be able to join your fingers maybe this way if you know this is uh, Spock <laughs> uh, if you have uh, seen uh, Star Trek but it's quite difficult you know so if you need to practice it all right uh, the third one right that strategy is uh, using gestures and facial expressions. Yeah? So uh, all of this, uh, oh, this can be used especially for speaking practice when students speak, uh, you, when you don't want them to, when, when you don't want to interrupt them. So you use your gestures and facial expressions. For example, if you want to show that students must use past tense, but uh, they're telling a story, right? Uh, an anecdote, a story. From their, from their life yeah, experience and they keep using present tenses so you should show it to you like use past tenses yeah and they usually understand uh, teacher yeah yes. teacher will you post this presentation to our classroom yeah sure i will even post a video hopefully mm -hmm. i'll post a link so Going back with the past, yeah. Vice versa, if they need to use future, you can you can show like this. Yeah. Uh, you can also read from your face expressions to use. Yeah. You can show your surprise. Yeah. On the on the face. Yeah. For example, let's choose one of the uh, best expressions. Which do you think is the best one that you can use? Third? Third one. <laughs> like greeting. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for error, you mean? When students make a mistake and when you want to indicate. Ah, so. <laughs> ah I'm not third. Yeah. Uh, not seven. Seven is definitely not seven. Yeah. Not seven. You know, some teachers use one. <laughs> Really? <laughs> kind of. Uh, like, hmm. I guess nine. Why not? Nine. Or eight. Eight. Well, maybe some teachers use eight. Yeah, like. Wait, the second one. About? Yeah. Maybe elderly second. teachers. <laughs> oh, second one. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's a tricky question again. I don't like any of these expressions. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, maybe. This could be used, like showing you surprise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, like raising your eyebrows. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, come on, you're, you're making a mistake. Yeah. Surprise might be used. Much better. All right. Uh, the next technique is a phonemic symbols. Uh, it, this is for pronunciation. Yeah. A lot of students uh, keep making mistakes uh, in their pronunciation. So you should teach them how to use those uh, symbols. Yeah, so we have a phonemic chart here uh, by British Council. So we should write the transcription of the board and explain, like uh, especially dithongs, for example, here, uwa, e, for example, yeah, and e, uh, for example, the stressed a, uh, cat, and e, uh, uh, schwa sound, the computer, t, computer, this is schwa sound, not computer. Yeah, so it's computer. You should demonstrate, right? So you should use phonemic symbols and modeling at the same time. All right, let's go to the next uh, correcting strategy. It's echo correction. Uh, here we have uh, a cartoon, which I liked. So this is uh, Trump, President of the United States. Standing on a cliff and shouting racism and xenophobia, racism and xenophobia, racism and xenophobia. Yeah. So he, he keeps shouting 
and then he asks, like, he's surprised, like, now, where did that come from? You know, <laughs> like, uh, it's not me, it's people talking, you know, like, racism is not oh, yeah. And I'm just echoing it. So this is a bit uh, hilarious. But actually, it's uh, Trump himself talking about racism and xenophobia, and uh, people are influenced. Uh, what does it mean? Echo correcting. Echo correcting means repeating what Elena says with the rising intonation. Yeah? Uh, I think uh, Marima mentioned that. So we, should, we ex say exactly the same thing, uh, what Sue said, uh, but we, with a rising intonation. For example, the student says, uh, I'm angry. And the teacher says, I'm angry. And Mr. Parab said, I'm angry. And the student then corrects himself, like, oh, I agree. All right. Or, uh, my bag was kidnapped. My bag was kidnapped. And the student says, oh, it was stolen. Yeah? Or kidnapped. Uh, once uh, one of the students actually said, I, 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 was, I was kidnapped. <laughs> I was surprised, like, uh, you were kidnapped and you're here? What's wrong? But she wanted to say, I was robbed, actually. Interesting word. Uh, another technique is identifying the mistake. Yeah? So uh, we can use it with errors, not slips, because students actually do not understand that this is an error. That's why they're making it. Yeah? So we can directly focus our attention on that mistake. Yeah. Uh, you can write it on the board or you can repeat it. Yeah. And you can ask the students like, are you sure? Are you sure you want to say this? Are you sure it is used this way? Uh, and then you try to elicit the answers from students. Uh, you should elicit correct answers from students. From the student himself first made a mistake. If he or she cannot answer, then you should elicit this answer from the whole class. Yeah, so, and there is usually one student who can correct. And students uh, remember better this way uh, when someone different than a teacher uh, says the correct answer. If nobody can uh, give the correct answer, only then you should provide uh, the correct version. Okay, so, we seen six techniques. Uh, the seventh one is delayed correction. Late, delay is postponed when you correct later. So when should we use it? Should we use it for with fluency activities, yeah, for speaking activities, such as role play, presentation, peer work, whatever, whatever the activity is. Yeah, so you just have to monitor the activity and should make notes of students' mistakes. Not slips, because slips are okay. Students can correct them by themselves. Yes. Yeah. Take notes of serious errors. After the, after the activity, you can write those mistakes on the board and draw students' attention to those mistakes. Like, look, a few phrases that you made and uh, you're using them incorrectly. Uh, for example, if to be honest, yeah. Uh, what is the mistake? If to be honest. Exclude if. Exactly. Yeah, I should say, to be honest, students keep uh, translating word for word from their L1 and they translate it from Russian. They would just name, yeah? So they put if, yes, but in English, we say just to be honest. To be honest, I don't think so, for example. Uh, you don't have to focus on the student, like uh, if uh, the student might feel inhibited, yeah, afraid. Or if the student is shy, you don't have to just tell that. For example, Ruslan made this mistake. Yeah? But if uh, students actually don't care about it much, there are some students who, who actually want to be corrected all the way, all the time. And uh, they can say, like, Tishu, if I make a mistake, please tell me. Correct me, like, always. Yeah? And tell me that uh, I make a mistake. If, it's, if there are students like this, you can tell their names. So, yeah. Actually, I'll show you, I'll send you a link to a uh, correcting technique, uh, a very nice one, uh, where uh, the teacher uses um, a kind of indication. Well, uh, each student has a kind of a shape uh, it, which has three colors red, green, and yellow. 
And actually that indicates the degree of how students want to be corrected. If it's red, it means I don't want to be corrected at all. And it's usually on the desk in front of the students. I don't want to be corrected at all. It's red. Don't approach me today. I'm in a bad mood. Yeah. Uh, yellow might be I'm in the middle. So you can correct me, but my not slips, some big errors. All right, I'm fine. And uh, green, green means like correct me all the time. I'm fine today. It's like, yeah. So uh, students can actually can make these kind of shapes and put them in front of them so teacher can uh, see the picture. You know. Just ignore mistakes. Uh, you can, we can actually we can ignore. Yeah, we're going to that strategy as well. Nalan, you raised the hand. You want to say something? Oh no no no! I, I accidentally just uh, keep coming and checking. Yeah. yeah. All right. Is it working or not? Uh -huh, it is. I can see it. <laughs> okay. The eighth one is appear and self correction. when they correct each other, right? Yes. Yeah. And students self-correct when they correct by themselves, yeah? And we should use it quite often. Actually, I give one example, yeah? When you draw attention of students to the mistake, you write them on the board, yeah? and then you elicit answers from students. Uh, so this is actually like a peer correction. Or you can divide students into pairs uh, for written correction work, for example, yeah? And they try to correct uh, the written work of their peers, underlining the mistakes, uh, crossing them out, providing a different, uh, uh, rephrasing the sentence, for example. Yeah. So we can use it quite often, especially with written work. Teachers should use peer correction and self correction a lot with written work. But it's time consuming, it takes a lot of time. Uh, but uh, a lot of teachers actually don't do that because they don't know how to do it. Uh, students don't know how to do it either. So we should teach to be correct. Uh, it's a, a very good technique, uh, it's a very useful one, if students know how to do it. You know? Some uh, students might not like uh, being PA corrected because they feel that their peers are not good enough. They're not experts in the field. They don't like it. Uh, but you can tell your students that in the end, uh, you will be corrected by the teacher anyway. So it's not so. It's first, it should be self-correction. Students self-correct. Write the first draft, for example, and they self-correct themselves. Then they write the second draft, and they uh, do it with a peer. The peer gives feedback. Yeah, and only then they write the final version. And the final version will be checked by the teacher. Actually, Americans they use it a lot uh, in their mm, writing. Uh, strategy in their policy, in writing policy. Students write two drafts and the third final version. Not like in Kazakhstan. No. Uh, all students are genius, they write the, the final draft right away and, and admit. No, it's not like this. There must be like two drafts and the final version. This way they improve. The students actually they see how they're improving. And uh, this might be as a full year, you know. Right. And this also actually teaches students how to be more independent yeah, from the teachers. And they must realize that they are responsible for their learning as well. So it's not only their teacher's responsibility. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Ignoring errors, yeah. Uh, you all said about ignoring errors. Well, actually, we, we can ignore and we should ignore errors sometimes. When? When it, uh, if it's a uh, if it's a slip and ignore it because you know that students actually know it. For example, where did he went? But you know that actually a student knows that where did he go? Right? It's a slip. For example, we can uh, use this I and mean, ignore the mistake is when, uh, for example, fluency activities. Some. Mm -hmm. Exactly, in fluency activities, you ignore errors in the beginning and then you give a delayed. Feedback yeah, after the fluency activity. Or you can totally ignore, just do not focus and do not teach students when, uh, if, if it's above learner's language level. Yeah, let's say it's beginner level students, but they made a mistake with uh, 
present perfect, for example. They don't know what present perfect is at the moment. It's like uh, at elementary level, you know? So you just skip it. You don't pay attention to that. You can only provide the correct version. Like, we should say this way, but uh, you don't have to explain. Because if you keep start explaining, they might not understand. And students no, actually, yeah, uh -huh. they might be confused. They might be confused. So just ignore it. Reformulate, say the correct version, and continue. Slips, yeah, some of you not, not mentioned the slips. You don't have to correct them. Uh, you can ignore mistakes made by shy learners, again, because they might be demotivated, they might be afraid. Uh, so, uh, don't correct them. We correct them individually then. Uh, maybe, if they're not against, yeah. If uh, they don't feel inhibited, why not? Because anyway, it's a mistake, they should correct it. But still, you don't have to correct every mistake. Uh, you can focus on the big errors. Yeah, only errors. Don't focus on the clues. And again, uh, pay attention to that uh, shape. Yeah, green, yellow, or red. Mm -hmm. And in order to avoid those mistakes, you should encourage your students to listen a lot and to read a lot. So they might be exposed to the language. For output, we need input yeah. to, be, to be strong we need to eat food we need to eat meat for example right to drink milk and uh, reading and listening is actually that meat is that meat yeah so they make us stronger because we are exposed to different phrases uh, how the words are used in the context students can write them down and actually we just pick, pick up the language you just remember the phrase all of a sudden and you don't remember where you heard it actually but it somehow appears in your head so encourage your students to read a lot. Listen a lot. Right. Uh, the tenth technique is reformulating. Reformulating is uh, similar to echo, but in echo, we repeat the same, the, exactly the same phrase what students says with a rising intonation. Yeah. But the reformulating is rephrasing, paraphrasing what students said in, in a correct way. Yeah. So repeating the utterance correctly without drawing students' attention to the mistake. For example, the student says, he goat to the zoo yesterday. So uh, the student here uses past simple ed, he adds ed to all the verbs, but uh, it's a regular verb, right? So the teacher can paraphrase, oh, that's right, he went to the zoo yesterday. And the student knows, ah, not goat, went. And the student actually understands that he or she should say went, right? So teachers use reformulating a lot, actually especially for fluids activities, you yeah, know, speaking. Can you see it as well? Uh, the third one is recasting. It's similar, actually, to the formulating, yeah? Awarding a student's utterance and saying it back to him in its improved way. So it's, uh, in reformulating, we change just one word, yeah? But in recasting, we change like the whole phrase. Yeah, for example, uh, I'm not of the same opinion as my friend. Yeah, the student says it, but the teacher says, oh, you mean you don't agree with him? So more simple, more authentic. Yeah. And the last one, the 12th correction for writing especially, we use correction codes. Actually, we use it, if you remember, in the beginning of our semester. Yeah. Uh, but we, uh, do you remember we should use it with what level learners? Higher level learners or low level learners? High. High. Exactly. High level yeah. learners. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they might be capable of finding their mistakes, yeah? But uh, beginner and elementary, elementary learners are actually not aware of their mistakes. They might not be aware. You should use it. Uh, every teacher can have uh, his own correction technique. His code, I mean codes. Yeah. So here we we see like a new paragraph, not necessary. Yeah. I just found it on the internet. So you create your own, it's like a combination. But you should provide your students with it, of course. All right. So about correcting learners today. Uh, 
Uh, now we'll let's have a break for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll continue with uh, IELTS. Okay. All right, let's so grab yourself a cup of coffee. Good. Let's continue then. Today we'll talk about writing an introduction. Uh, I'll send you links to these videos. Actually, I was trying to play the video, but the quality wasn't very good. Uh, let's 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 see. Now let's try. I just want to see. Oh, actually, turn it off. I'll explain myself. I'll see. Because the sound quality isn't good when you the video. So, uh, writing task two, and it means the essay. Uh, this is Mr. Adam, the speaker. And what he says is that uh, we need to plan first. Yeah, never start your essay without a plan. Uh, it should take like one minute, maybe two, no more than that, because uh, you have only 40 minutes in total for your essay and 20 minutes for describing a graph, right? So this is why plan first. Plan first, because when we have a plan, it's clear what you're going to write. And introduction is the most important part because uh, you win or you lose, you make it or you fail. Yeah. Uh, this is why you should write a very good introduction. Um, and it should not exceed five sentences. It should, it should be like three or five sentences long, not very long. Uh, and uh, we have also uh, the teacher, who is called Liz, I'll also show you. She says that uh, there should be like 50 words. Yeah? No more than 50 words, even 35 is fine. 35, between 35 and 50. Because you will not have enough time, you will lose, you will waste your time by writing introduction. And actually, this is uh, the common mistake of students from uh, post-Soviet Union, you know, from Kazakhstan and Russia. They make very long introduction, very long. Like uh, I remember assigning essays to my freshmen when uh, they wrote like half of the essay was introduction, or even seventy percent was introduction. But uh, introduction is important, but still. Uh, the body part is more important, you know? Make sure that your body actually has uh, enough evidence. All right, so uh, Mr. Adams said that we should answer these five, uh, four questions, like what is the topic? What is the question? What is your opinion? So this is a thesis, you must state it. And what are your reasons why you think so? Yeah, so what is the difference between topic and question? Topic is more general. Uh, but question is like, to what extent do you agree? So we must agree or disagree. So this is the question. So we must uh, choose one side, right? Uh, and we should state our opinion. Yeah, and, we, and then we should say why we agree. Uh, and uh, in some cases, students write like uh, in the introduction part. Uh, so in this essay, where I'm going to uh, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of living in a, a village and a city. Well. Don't do so. This is cliche, and uh, it doesn't look authentic. Actually, it doesn't look natural. I never, I have never done so, and I recommend you not to do it. And don't use I uh, very often. Yeah, um, you can state I in the in the beginning, like in the essay, in the introduction, like I believe, yeah, or I agree or disagree. This is fine, but later I avoid using I. Mm, can it sound like this is say is going to describe or something like not so, I but this is say don't use it I, I I have never used it I don't like it actually I have never seen well some students do so but I personally I don't think that it sounds very authentic no. okay, let's continue and uh, this teacher is actually give examples of introductions and uh, I haven't noticed any anybody writing like this like i'm going to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of um, this and that okay 
So uh, here, uh, Adam is talking about the common topic, like living in the countryside or in a city. So, so he don't he doesn't use the same words, right? Uh, deciding where to live. So, so this is topic, the gen general topic. Deciding where to live is one of the life, life's most difficult choices. One may opt for, opt for, uh, so choose. Yeah. Don't use the same uh, verbs or words actually uh, again and again. Uh, try to use the synonyms. And this way you will show that your vocabulary range is quite big. Yeah. One may opt for life in the country or the city. In my opinion, Life in the city is more advantageous. This is due to the fact that the city offers very economic and social opportunities. Well, uh, the wording here, this is due to the fact, due to the fact, it, it, this is actually very long. This is due, if I were him, for example, I would just make uh, life in the city is more advan advantageous due mm, to better economic and social opportunities or owing to actually owing to is better uh, due to is usually used for negative statements like uh, the flights were canceled due to the storm yeah. owing to is usually used with uh, for positive sentences yeah. actually Adam uh, shows here as well yeah so he uh, says that we should join the sentence um, the longer the sentence sometimes is better, but don't use it <laughs> all the time. So here is a compound sentence, complex sentence. Yeah. Uh, he reduced it even sh more, made it, sh it shorter. In my opinion, life in the city is more dangerous because the city offers better blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, another example as a person reaches adulthood he needs to decide uh, instead of using he uh, i would use one because this is neutral gender neutral uh, and more academic actually yeah, one as a person which which is adulthood one needs to decide where they would prefer to live yeah you can also use they plural instead of he or she while there are advantages of both living in the country and the city. So quite complex. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, this is another thing. So he uses while. We use while quite a lot uh, when we want to show contraction, con con contrast, contrast between two uh, facts. While there are advantages to both living in the country, the city, comma, don't forget about comma. I believe that for economic reasons, life in the city is more beneficial so, two <coughs> opinions yeah and you state your own opinion here this is because the city offers more employment opportunities as well as a more affordable cost of living the fact why yeah and then you can continue with the body explain uh, actually defending your own point of view here, Adam thinks that uh, economic living in this is better. I will continue with the body explaining why uh, it is better. Yeah, actually, he made a statement here like employment opportunities and affordable cost of living. So we could focus on that, on those two points, and maybe add one more. And uh, so that would be the second paragraph now, you know, the body. And the third paragraph would be against. However, or on the other side, yeah, and then we should give disadvantages or advantages of living in the country. You know? And <coughs> sorry, and in the last paragraph, <clears throat> it will be conclusion, just summarizing what you have written. Here, Adam actually shows the the complex sentence that he wrote and the difference. Uh, and don't use he and she. Uh, together with he or she he slash she uh, Adam says that it's actually annoys might annoy evaluators people who grade your uh, essays so use one one of them he or she 
If you're a girl, use she. If you're a boy, use he. Uh, I try to avoid both. I try to use he, uh, one, I mean, uh, or they, plural. Okay. Uh, Emma, this is another teacher. And um, all of the all, all of the teachers actually that I've uh, watched, they recommend paraphrasing the sentence, the, the statements. Yeah. Because we usually have uh, this question, right? So this is the question. The question of the essay. Education is the single most important factor in the development of a country. To what extent do you agree with this statement? And we usually have this kind of uh, tasks. And what Emma says and what other teachers say, not only Emma, yeah, uh, they say that we should paraphrase this. And this is the easiest way to start introduction. She writes uh, her own opinion. Uh, our phrase, change the words, change the sentence structure. However, you must keep the meaning. Yeah? And here she gives uh, hints. Just use synonyms. Yeah? Uh, and she changes education with schooling. So, um, important factor. Importance might be replaced with significance. Significant is quite is very academic. Yeah, it's a very nice word. Factor, like aspects or elements. You know? um, development, advancements, yeah? evolution. Country, nation. Yeah? So she has all the words here. And what we would have uh, might be like schooling is the most significant aspect in the advancement of the nation. Yeah, so she paraphrases. Paraphrase the same the task itself. Yeah. Uh, another technique that uh, Emma recommends that you can change the form of the words. So verbs might become nouns or adjectives, and vice versa. Yeah. So here, here she showed uh, the structure. Yeah. Well, you, you can actually change the places of the words. Uh, I tried to. I phrase the sentence completely. I use a different structure and I use the different vocabulary. This way, I want to show that I'm quite proficient and can say it in my own words. Actually, this is what we need to do when writing, when doing research and writing a literature review. You know, uh, you shouldn't paraphrase every sentence by sentence. You should read uh, the paragraph and then write the paragraph in your own words. And this way, you will not plagiarize. Uh, another technique Emma uses is concessions, like agreeing. Yeah. So here she also uses although because she contrasts two ideas. Like, although many would argue that the economy is the most important factor in nation building, comma, I think. Education has a far greater impact. So, public sentence, uh, comparing to um, different opinions and expressing your opinion at the same time. Yeah, so, very nice sentence. Here's another uh, teacher, Jade. Uh, and here's the task. In Britain, Elderly people may go to live in a home with other old people where nurses look after them. Sometimes the government has to pay for this care. Do you think, who do you think should pay for this care? Yeah. Uh, and one of the techniques that Jade uses is rhetorical question. It's a question. You start introduction with a question. Yeah. And he, she, she recommends uh, should. So what she says, which, which actually uh, wrote here is what is this? Uh, should the government or family pay for the care of elderly people? Or should the government be responsible for providing care for elderly people? Question mark. Right, yeah. uh, and then you can, you can continue with the content. This question generates a lot of debate because, and you say why? 
MIC provides very good uh, phrases yeah, that we can use to follow the content. Opinion is divided about this issue because yeah, or most people, politicians, think that what? Yeah. Personally, I would start, uh, I, I have never started uh, essays with rhetorical questions, actually. I usually start with a statement. Like, opinion is divided about who should take care of elderly people in Great Britain. Yeah. Many people, blah, 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 yeah. Here. Uh, another technique that uh, Jade recommends is using a while introduction. Yeah. So, and a while introduction should needs what? Context sentence, just a paraphrase, then a while sentence, contrast, then statement of your opinion. Here, the first one the care of elderly people is expensive. Therefore, there is debate about who should pay for it. This is a statement of the task. While some people think that the government should pay, comma, others think the family should do so. Yeah, for example, don't say again and again should pay, should pay, yeah. you can say should do so. Uh, in my opinion, there are strong arguments on both sides. And you continue, yeah? So three sentences. And if you remember, as uh, Adam said in the beginning, we should write like three, maybe five, no more sentences. Yeah. Right. Uh, you can also replace some people with many people, for example. And the third um, example that Emma, that Jade actually uh, suggests is Sharing experience, contrasting cultures. Yeah. For example, uh, context sentence about your country, about Kazakhstan. Then use however again to contrast and then state your opinion. All right? So here, Jade gives an example with Nepal, where she lived uh, for some time. So in Nepal, the family is responsible for the care of the elderly parents. Therefore, they must pay for the for it, for example. Yeah. She used for the care again. Again. However, in Britain, the situation is different. Perhaps because family is family life is different. Yeah. In my opinion, blah blah blah. Yeah. So what we see in common is that um, all of the teachers recommend writing three or five sentences, no more than that, you know. Uh, here we have Lucy, English with Lucy. All of these teachers actually have their own channels. Preparing for IELTS and teaching English. Here is the introduction. This also gives very good piece of advice. Uh, let's read this sentence. The best way to improve health is to do regular exercise. To what extent do you agree? So the task. Uh, when we write essays, we usually include the hook. The hook also means attention grabber. What does it mean, attention grabber? Uh, make your essay interesting to like grab the attention to of readers to continue to read. Exactly, and we also use this technique for, in public speaking. Yeah. yeah, we have to draw the speaker's attention right away. Uh, but in IELTS, you don't need it. Oh, you don't need it? No. In IELTS, you don't need it because this is academic. You don't need to draw uh, our readers' attention. We don't need it. And uh, moreover, you will use lose your time by thinking about this attention grabber. Uh, just so creativity here actually doesn't count. Right? So don't use attention grabber. Just write the background statements and then so paraphrase the sentence, the task, and then Write your own opinion. Uh, here, what she says is that you have only 40 minutes, so don't use the hook. Paraphrase the statement and then write your own opinion. 
Here, how you see paraphrased. The most effective method in developing and improving health is considered to be daily exercise. Yeah, so regular daily exercise. Yeah. And this is a statement here. In my opinion, I agree that exercise is the key to health. However, I also believe that diet is important. So here she states her opinion and gives two factors why she thinks so. Yeah. And here is your introduction. The most effective method to developing and improving health is considered to be daily exercise. In my opinion, I agree that, actually I don't like it, in my opinion, I agree. In my opinion, I agree. <laughs> Uh, I would I would remove actually in my opinion. I agree that exercise is the key to health. However, I also believe that the diet is important. So this, these are just examples, you know, these are one of the best example ways, which is actually didn't give a lot of thought to this. They're just demonstrating. Uh, and here you see it focuses on number of words, yeah. So like between 35 and 50, no more than that. Because the whole essay is like 250, yeah? Well, uh, this is it. Now, what we're going to do is to write the following essay. Yeah. Just let me find it's here. The keys. Did this task, this lesson. Here it is. Okay, so this is the essay. Writes about the following topic. The inequality between rich and poor nations is now wider than it has ever been before. What do you think are the main causes of this difference? And what do you think can be done to reduce the gap? So give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. So we will practice it now. We'll write only introduction. Uh, we write only introduction. Yeah. So let's and the time that you spend on introduction should be like five, maybe six minutes. No more than that. So let's uh, start, and you'll finish at it's ten eighteen now. Ten twenty five. Mm -hmm. All right. Twenty five, and then you'll read your own. Uh, introductions will compare what we have. We have seven minutes and start now. Charge my phone.
have one minute left well, let's try to finish Who has finished? Almost. Almost. <laughs> Just sentence left. Just half of the sentence left. I'm writing too, but I have started a bit late. I'm going to finish right.
I think I wrote something stupid. I hope you will have mercy on me. Whatever you have, it doesn't matter. They're practicing. As you wrote. <laughs> Okay. Anybody who would like to read? Let's start. I'm ready. You? you may start then. No, I will write. I will read the last. No. You might be demotivated. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Rumila, did you finish? Have you finished? Rumila, you can start. Oh, Nalan. <laughs> Almost ten minutes is too much. Okay, may I start? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't want yeah, to. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, do you hear me? Ah, okay. Yes, we do. Yeah, we we hear you. So who is going to read, Nalan? You, you going to read? Okay. Mm, okay. The social distance between wealthy and underprivileged is growing with the time. This has a huge negative impact on the whole quality of life. There are several reasons to it, like, for example, uh, social corruption or uh, individual egoism. Hopefully, to any problem, there should be a possible solution. People just need to give it a try. Very general. <laughs> very general. Worry and general, not very specific. Okay. okay. Though you use very good vocabulary. I like the vocabulary, but you need a bit better structure. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. Okay. By time, the gap between rich and poor societies becomes even wider. Although large amount of opportunities, inequality is even more visible. One of the main reasons might be overdevelopment of technology, which replaces people with machines and causes thousands of unemployment. Okay. <laughs> is it only comment? <laughs> uh, uh, incorrect. Incorrect. <laughs> well, did you always like think any reason myself in this short amount of time? To be honest, but in real life we have. <laughs> Uh, again, I, I yeah, the structure was a bit. <laughs> Very clear, let's say so. Okay. Maima? Asal? Yeah, Asal, let's, let's continue with you. I did the most stupid introduction you have ever heard. So, mm -hmm. Fine. nowadays, the difference 
in living standards in poor and wealthy nations is notable. Uh, lots of reasons and causes can be provided that lead to such circumstances, and also there are plenty of ways to solve this problem and balance quality of life for country. Okay. Have a mercy, please. <laughs> it's very well. <laughs> yeah. But then any... what quality? Balance life? Balance the quality of life. Uh, uh, right. uh, Do you speak like um, read the question first and then paraphrase it, and it will be introduction. So I use this technique. Okay. Marima? Yeah, what about you? Are you here? Yuma. Okay, okay. Well, Come on. Are you hearing me? Yes, we did. Okay. Uh -huh. In elderly times, there is to have equality. There was no poor or rich. They just all together lived in the cave. And with the development of industry and technology, uh, there began to appear inequality between uh, richness and poor. Is it okay? So so. <laughs> you know, inequality always existed before. Well, I don't think so. Well, I mean to say, in ancient times, when all people lived in the cave. <laughs> Is it okay? Uh, well, not bad. I would say that it's a disaster, it's okay. It's okay. But it comes with practice. And you should practice a lot. Fine. Okay. Sound. Something I don't know. No, there is background sound maybe because you, your PC is on computer and uh, your phone at the same time. You should get rid of one of them. Okay, well, who else? Jansaya? Are you here? Are you with us? Jansaya is not with us. I'm here. Yeah, Jansaya? I turned on your computer. Your, your... It's not working. The sound. I'm trying to switch it on, but it's not working. It's on my... Yeah, sure. Please. Okay. Uh, in the past centuries, there wasn't any much difference between developing countries, developing countries because they were uh, integrated and were helping each other. However, nowadays the situation has changed a lot, and there is a large gap between poor and rich countries. I suppose that. The reason is because of not supporting each other and acting, uh, acting, what's say, uh, by themselves. Okay, you're very naive. <laughs> very naive. You believe that countries should help each other. Nobody helps. Uh, it's for free, you know. Uh, everybody's for himself. Yeah, everybody's for himself. Well, there should be other reasons that uh, actually to write good essays you need to read a lot you need yes. to a lot of uh, books a lot of uh, Did you huh? uh, the fact that the world is divided which is well known the split is traditionally considered in the global challenges of our time it's essential to uh, to understand how modern uh, modern world Order is focused on uh, resolving the problem of inequality. The gap between wealth and the poverty is widening or narrowing. For example, in China and India, the inequality between rich and the poor is enormous. Um, nevertheless, the lack of these countries in terms of income from the USA or Europe has become. That's all. Too much information in the introduction. <laughs> Too much information, yeah, uh, and it 
sounds like not introduction but the body already you know shall i read mine i'll read mine what i wrote here uh, the welfare level okay so here the welfare level between developed and third world countries is growing exponentially exponentially which is alarming the most significant reasons of this inequality might be the investments in human resources and quality of education. In my opinion, governments should spend more funds on the fields mentioned above. Oh, okay. This is my introduction. No. <laughs> yeah. I feel myself like, no, no, no. Very demotivating. <laughs> Very clear, you know? So I just paraphrase the first sentence here, like the welfare level between and developed and developing. I didn't want to use the same word, you know, if you noticed the welfare level between developed and third world countries is growing exponentially. Exponentially, that means in you know, a mathematical way, yeah? exponentially, which is alarming. Alarming, it's worrying, it, it worries us, yeah. The most significant reasons of this inequality might be, so I'm not very sure, like is, so I just give reasons that like might be uh, investments in human resources and quality of education. So how do I know it? Because I read a lot. I know that uh, these are the main factors actually. Uh, in my opinion, governments should spend more funds on fields mentioned above. Now, the last sentence might be improved, actually, I don't like it myself, but still, here I express my opinion. Yeah? If I believe that these two factors are the most important. Yeah, education. Yeah, education is very important. In developed countries, education is, like, very good, and they uh, invest a lot of money in human resources. It means what? Education, healthcare, social security, yeah? all of this, actually. Uh, all right. Well, so this is how we practice today. We wrote introductions. Uh, I will also, I will give you homework. I will send the links to these videos and send uh, three topics. Three topics and you'll have to write three different introductions. I mean, three introductions to these topics. Okay. We'll practice, all right? Uh, I will also send uh, a link to the video of our lesson as well. I will trim, cut some places and uh, Reduce it. I will upload it to YouTube, one of my accounts, and I will send you a link as well. Teacher, do you mean I let, I, when you said that you read a lot, do you mean you read uh, special articles or just generally books? I read books, newspaper, I watch news, a lot of stuff, mm. different stuff, different things. Really good for this because local bloggers post their articles there too. Mm -hmm. So, it's actually, to read it doesn't matter what, just to read because you're enriching the vocabulary, you're seeing others' opinion, and this is how I learned it. Exactly, exactly. Especially for scientists, there are a lot of scientists actually uh, on Facebook, and I joined them, and their opinions are really great. So, if you read the opinions, uh, you'll be quite equipped, let's say so. For example, I didn't know about uh, the transportation system, public transport a lot. Uh, but I followed some bloggers uh, in Almaty, who were, were actually experts in that field, and they explained how it works. And then it occurred to me, like, wow, I didn't know about it. And this is very simple. In Europe, it works like this, but in our country, actually, it can work as well. But it's not happening. Uh, but people just don't know, you know, because they don't read a lot. They're not ex experts in the field. So we need to read uh, this kind of information from the experts. And also, uh, TED Talks also uh, can help, yes? Exactly, exactly. TED Talks are great. TED Talks are great. Especially if they're uh, presented by scientists because they're experts you know they can have some evidence they don't they, they don't use in my opinion a lot they give evidence these are the facts 
this is, this is the proof why it's happening. And actually, uh, you can listen to some some stand up comics comedians because they use good language actually, and you can learn something in humorous way and become more sarcastic. Yeah. yeah. There are also mm, podcasts, different podcasts. Yes. I want to mention it. Listen to them as well. Okay. Well, this is it then. This is the end of our lesson today. I have a question. Yeah, no. yeah please. Uh, how are we going to write uh, IELTS writing? Uh, in Google Classroom. In Google oh, Classroom, okay. I think. Google Classroom or Moodle. Actually, I created Moodle as well. And uh, I'm going to invite you all. Actually, you must be there if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. You must be there. Uh, actually, you can find me there. I, I'll look uh, through again. But uh, I think I will enroll all of you to my Moodle classroom. Maybe I already did. I just don't remember. I think I did. So open your Moodle, Moodle your Moodles as well, right? Uh, for Moodle to log into your Moodle, Moodle uh, account, you need to write your name and surname, name dot surname, as far as I know. Or it might be your ID number. I don't remember. It might be your ID number. And for password, you must use the password for the Wi-Fi, for the internet. For the portal, but for the internet. Uh, so you log in and you'll see our class there as well. And uh, the final exam will be via Moodle, I think, because I can set the exact time when you have to start and when you have to finish. Mm -hmm. And then I'll run your papers through Turnitin, of course. Okay. Well, this is it then. If you have, do you have any more questions? No. 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 Well, that's it then. Uh, some girls didn't call, like John Sayah, for example. Yeah, John Sayah, maybe they just switched on and uh, left or continued sleeping. So, <laughs> my losses. Those who didn't say anything, uh, they considered to be absent. Uh, and check your uh, portals as well. I'll put it in here. Are you? I couldn't hear anything from you. Oh, okay. And I told you to switch on the uh, camera, yeah? So I can see that uh, you're sitting, not sleeping in your bed, yeah? Because oh. <laughs> I can't see it. Right. So, Are you okay? Yeah, I, I, I can see. I can see Kamshad, Asal, everybody. When you talk, yeah, you just, this uh, WebEx shows me who's talking and they show the picture. The camera, the camera. Okay, we have another lecture now, another mm -hmm. seminar. Yeah, let's have a break, yeah. Please. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.